Earning interest on mobile wallets. Tailing savings for specific goals in life. Receiving enhanced rebates for grocery spending. These are some of the features being offered by GXS Bank and Trust Bank, the newest entrants to Singapore's financial services sector. And to set themselves apart, they're focusing their efforts on meeting the needs of customers and serving them well. We want to take a very different approach to banking in Singapore. We want to allow customers to save better. How are we innovating? We are giving the entire control of the rewards journey in your hand. And we have built transparency as a cornerstone of our proposition. And we believe that a combination of these two would really help us differentiate and possibly create a new space for us in this banking market. The two retail digital banks are entering a saturated market, dominated by incumbents with a suite of digital products. But the new entrants are backed by Standard Chartered, Fairprice, Grab and Singtel. Leveraging their respective ecosystems, they've set their sights on carving out a share of the market. One of the biggest pain points that clients are today worried about is the rising cost of living. By virtue of being integrated into the NTUC fair price ecosystem, we are able to create real tangible value for clients. For example, we are now giving up to 21% rebate on your daily essentials at fair price. So we truly feel we are a very universal proposition. It's not only acquiring customers, but it's actually understanding their behavior as well. So for example, if you, if you move house and you need to switch your uh, Wi-Fi provider, your internet provider to, uh, to a new address, and, and then using uh, Singtel's um, database, we actually know you need to uh, take a renovation loan. And so um, we will be able to reach out to you. You may be thinking about a renovation loan. How about a special rate for you? One concern, though, is whether consumers have the stomach to go fully digital. The main challenges that these banks will face, DG banks will face, um, probably will be adoption rate. Um, because much as, much as a lot of things have started to go digital, I think it will take the general public uh, a little bit of time to wrap their heads around not having any physical presence at all um, for DG banks, right? Because it's, we're not just talking about whether they have a, a branch, you know, for you to conduct your, your banking affairs. Um, you won't even have ATMs, you won't have cash machines, you know, mm. and everything is um, basically online. Uh, you, you, you won't have cash, basically. It's easier for digital banks to drive adoption of secondary bank accounts, right, in the market. But I think it will be interesting to see how they push for better products to compete for the primary bank accounts, largely held by the traditional banks, right? So that's one. Secondly, I think, you know, in terms of personalized and better customer experience, um, the truth is a lot of the complex, more complex personal um, financial services like home loans, insurance, uh, is still done heavily via relationship and face-to-face -face interaction. With all banking services done online, cybersecurity is a priority. We need to make sure that uh, we uphold the highest standards. So right from the start, we've built our, our teams um, and invested into um, tech and, and uh, tech risk, cybersecurity risk and data protection. Uh, we've um, worked very closely as well with MES um, to create the frameworks that would require, uh, that would ensure that our customers, um, the data, their monies, um, our systems are just kept safe. Analysts believe that digital banks will benefit consumers and raise the bar for the banking industry as a whole. Digital banks help increase the level of competition um, in, in, in the industry. So I think post-COVID, you know, um, the digitization of banks, you know, was not so fast, to be honest, right? With, with, with the pandemic and everything, it kind of spurred this whole need, consumer need for more digital services, you know, um, things that don't require um, going down to uh, the banks. That's, that's one aspect. I think the other long overdue aspect is um, there's been a lot of legacy products that may not be effective to, or efficient or value add to, to the current customer kind of segments, right? So I think the introduction of these 
new digit banks really lift up the competition and hence unlock options for customers. GXS is also expanding in Southeast Asia, where over 70% of the population is estimated to be underbanked. And that digital wave could permanently transform the entire banking landscape. The brick and mortar model of, of banking will eventually become a thing of the past. And I think um, the, the, the introduction of DG banks is probably the, 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 the start that we need to move towards that direction. So um, yes, if you ask me whether this business model will work, I believe it, it, it will. That, that has to be the case, I think, moving forward in the future.